What causes the popping sound in systems? This question comes from Daniel in Quebec, Canada. A couple of questions from Canada recently, and I appreciate all our Canadian friends. I appreciate all our friends. <laughs> uh, hey, Paul, I have a few simple questions that may seem obvious to you, but anyway, here they are. The obvious ones are the best ones because a lot of people ask, them, so that's good. How come that to avoid a popping sound in the speakers, I have to turn on my preamp before turning on my amplifier? And when I want to turn off my sound system, I must turn off my amplifier first and reverse that process. And also, are those popping sounds really damaging for my speakers? Thanks for your answers from the Great White North, a great place to enjoy the music when it's too cold outside. Boom! We're getting winter here in uh, Colorado. And uh, I'm just, I don't know, I get so used to summer and then winter comes and, I, you know, winter's not official till December 21st and it's, well, we're getting close. Okay, um, it is a simple question and it is one that many of us who have been in the business for a long time just kind of take for granted. but. That's a mistake because it isn't obvious to everybody why that happens. So the simple answer to this is that a power amp should be the last thing you turn on and the first thing you turn off because anything happening before the power amp is going to be transmitted through the power amp and to your speakers, right? So now when we and th this particularly happened years and years ago, and, and it still happens, but most designers, including us, don't really uh, have this problem anymore because we use output relays and we quiet it down and we make sure that pop doesn't really happen. But years ago, uh, and, and I'm sure still today, products that just turn on, let's take a preamp. When you just turn a preamp on, if there is no output muting relay, which means basically that I've disconnected the, the interconnect cables that feed the power amp from the preamp, it means that I've disconnected them and they're no longer attached to the preamp. So the preamp's doing all of its stuff and turning up, you know, doing whatever it does and they're disconnected. And once it's all settled out, then I connect them and it's a quiet connection. And that's the right way to do it. But for many, many, many years, that was not the way people did it. They just, uh, let, let's take a tube preamp, right? You fire that sucker up or, or a solid state preamp and you turn the power on. Um, you're going from zero to <laughs> zero to 60 real quick. Um, as these things turn on, the power supply is going to come up. The circuit isn't yet uh, turned on and so the first thing that a circuit does typically um, is it what we call it goes DC it'll boom it'll s slam to one rail and then oh, to another and then uh, and settle itself out right because the power supplies don't turn on exactly the same maybe this one comes on a little quicker than the other so you'll see it, it, it when we first turn on a circuit it'll bang up to a rail and then back down and then finally settle out and that whether it's tubes or solid states, pretty common in an amplification circuit. They don't just come up real nice. They, they bang to a rail. And, and oh, so what does banging to a rail mean? Sorry, I'm using all these tech terms. Uh, and a a preamplifier, any kind of amplifier, has voltage rails. We, we, we refer to them as rails, but they're the, the, uh, the, the, the highest voltage, running on a battery, whatever. So, you know, like a, a preamp might run on plus and minus 20 volts. So at the, the highest level of, of plus and the lowest level of minus, we have even, or ground, whatever, those are called rails. Th those are the, the high power supplies and the amplifier sits between those two rails. So when we, when we put a signal in, it's going to go up going to start conducting, you know, it's actually the signal is conducting through the power supply, but it just think of it as the sine wave is going up, we're going closer to the plus, then we're coming back down and going closer to the minus and then back up again. Well, when it first turns on and, we, and when it's quiet, it sits at zero, halfway between those two rails, those two voltage things, right? 
Um, so when we uh, first turn the preamp on, it bangs up to the top. Now you're putting 20 volts, which is a huge signal, big, big, big signal to your power amplifier. And your power amplifier, if it's on, is going to go, oh, ho, ho, all right, boom, and it's going to try and power your speakers for that instant with that big boom of voltage if you don't have a muting relay, which most modern equipment does. So just to be on the safe side, always turn your power amp on last once your equipment has settled out uh, and then you reverse the process. I hope that makes sense. Um, I didn't want to make it too technical or complicated, but that's why. And, and again, most modern equipment, you don't have to worry about it. But, uh, oh, and you wanted, can it damage your speaker? Well, yeah, it can damage a woofer uh, if you bang it too hard, but typically not. It's just, you know, woo uh, And depending on the matchup between your, your system, it, it could. So I definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't go there if you can avoid it. All right. Great question. Thank you. I love these. I love the super simple ones because it helps people understand what's going on. And that's our goal in these, in these films. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.